welcome to Affliction Sharecoded, a podcast where we sharecode some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate their plausibility on a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim, and today we'll be sharecoding the Menendez brothers. I think today I'm attempting to tell a story that a lot of people have already told before. Most of them are quite accurate, I'd say, although the fact of the matter is that no one can gouge with 100% accuracy quite effectively. And the ones that are inaccurate, well, they don't even try and make up for it, I think. This isn't a story of grave interest of mine, nor have I thought extensively about it. I had to give a speech about it at school for a project, for a very small project, actually. And I guess when I was trying to dig up a topic for this month's podcast, I just went to it immediately. The first thing that came up to me was this. I know it is held close to a lot of Americans' hearts, though, so I'll try to keep the opinions to myself, but uh, conclusively there are no promises, as I will most likely go on a bit of a rant. So here's the story. It was August 20th, 1988. Two brothers, Lyle and Eric Menendez, who were 21 and 18 at the time, had gone out to see a movie, but had to make a pit stop to retrieve Lyle's ID. Back home in their L.A. mansion, though, they found the decimated bodies of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez, shot 15 times. In a snap, the seeming embodiment of a family living the American dream was shattered, but it turns out by the very members of that family implying the Menendez brothers, as the majority of you probably already know. But I think it's good to start from the very, very top. As an immigrant from Cuba, Jose Menendez was definitely a self-made man. After a series of smart decisions, he married beauty pageant queen Kitty Anderson, who I guess she was very pretty, and he rose from washing dishes to becoming a very, very successful entertainment executive And he was so successful that the family lived in a mansion that was once occupied by people like Michael Jackson and Elton John. And this probably contributes to why this case is so famous. It's probably because he also had ties in Hollywood. And that makes us wonder what actually went wrong, because that sounds like a great family to live in, right? You got everything you need. Well, Jose has definitely been proven to be a very strict person parent and kitty definitely wouldn't do anything to ease that there are actually records of her just not caring much about it like turning up the vacuuming noise whenever um jose would start hitting one of his kids i mean that's obviously still speculation but there is definite evidence for it lyle was destined to be a businessman like his father after graduating from princeton university Although I will note that he wasn't doing spectacularly in the university either. I think that he got suspended. Eric was pretty good at tennis, and with the help of his father, he wound up to be a nationally ranked player in his age bracket. And there are stories and rumors and hopes that if he hadn't been locked up, he definitely would have been playing some really good tennis for our entertainment purposes. So the dad was indeed a little pushy, and that's probably why it drove those two kids to excellence, but it certainly wasn't close to the grave motive of murder, one might think, but that's apparently not the case. After their parents' death, the Menendez brothers began acting a bit in the our parents just didn't die manner. They began buying Rolex watches and vintage cars, and although I know that everyone has different coping mechanisms, this just doesn't seem to be a plausible one. They they seem to be pretty much celebrating their parents' deaths. And within six months, the brothers had spent about $700,000 of Jose's fortune, which arguably is a lot of people's net worths. And it's an interesting amount of money to spend after your parents just died. So here comes a motive that the police thought of, money, because note that the police just didn't consider these people suspects. And when they came to arrest, I mean, actually, not that's not true, but when 911 came after the brothers phoned 
uh, the younger one, which who's Eric, he was crawled up in the lawn crying. So that that definitely doesn't seem like the picture that you would first think of when it comes to really, really aggressive murder. So I guess that's also why the police just didn't think of framing those two brothers as the sus- suspects. But they obviously couldn't arrest them just plainly, right? Because that's just the how the American justice system works. So they were only arrested when Eric confessed to a psychiatrist, Dr. Jerome Oziel. And this guy turns out to be a very, very important player in the entire trial. Um, and yeah, he basically, I'd say, quote unquote, made the mistake of telling this psychiatrist. And by the way, it isn't really protected by doctor-patient privilege if you have committed crime or if you feel endangered. So that was definitely a mistake if you were planning on not getting caught. But rather than telling the police, though, Dr. Oziel told his mistress, who in turn told the police out of spite after the couples had a little fight. So, yeah, it eventually wasn't Dr. Oziel who told the police, it was his mistress who ratted him out just because they had fought and he wanted him to feel bad. She even had an audio tape of the confessions. Just like that, two brothers were arrested for their alleged crimes, but it actually took a total of two years to figure out that the tape was protected by doctor-patient privilege or not. Um, Because, you know, it's kind of complicated. Is it eventually protected by doctor-patient privilege if it's not the doctor himself who told the police, but rather his mistress? She certainly wasn't endangered or anything. So, but finally, the Supreme Court did rule that it was admissible for court, so it was an official thing that Lyle and Eric were guilty. And you'd expect the trials to play out a bit simpler from then because you've already spent two years trying to figure out if they were guilty or not guilty, but no, the trials were not simple. The defense put up a revelation that Eric was molested as a child, and a few days before the murder, the father had almost death-threatened Lyle to keep quiet about it, or, yeah, so you, you, you get the deal if you don't keep quiet about it, because Lyle was indeed planning on telling the police, saying that this was a wrong thing to do, that it was just wrong for him to treat them like this. So the dad was like, if you tell him, you're dead to me. And now they were arguing that the murders were simply an act of self-defense. Kill them before they kill us. The brothers intentionally wore pastel colors to portray a sense of innocence to the public. Furthermore, the trials were streamed, creating national media sensationalism of a crushed family that swept through the nation. And the trials went on for six months, and the result was, of course, it had to be a split decision between the jury. So nothing could be done for the first trial, and we had to do another second trial, which took place a little later, in which the defense's reliance upon self-defense was actually challenged much better. And this trial is much less known to the public because it wasn't streamed and it just wasn't allowed to be streamed. So in the end, the prosecution eventually prevailed. Lyle and Eric were given a life sentence and they've been behind bars ever since. So the conclusion of this trial is questioned even now, when documentaries and other mediums are portraying and calling for a more fair outcome for the two brothers because, you know, young children are never supposed to be treated that way and maybe it harmed them psychologically, leading them to the death of the parents. So maybe it was just a rebound effect of what they did many, many years ago that eventually led to their own deaths. And many parts of the crime and the Menendez lives are left uncovered, as they should be, by the way. But the one thing I think that we can take from this is pretty clear. The public sensations from what could have been an everyday homicide can create long ripple effects that leave marks in both the legal system and how we view right and wrong. Now, that part was 
obviously very scripted and not so podcasty version of a story but that's that's the gist of how the menendez brothers came to fame in the american um media let's say the only reason people my generation came to know this story is via netflix or a youtube clip for me it was the latter people really know how to reminisce on that platform they put up videos about eric and lyle crying crying on the stand and to be fair, if the two brothers were any less good looking, I don't really think that this case would be so famous. They're indeed what a lot of people consider good looking and giving prep school rich, innocent boys vibes, although they were far into their adulthood during the trials. So the misinformation regarding this topic, I know to be very, very crazy. Ryan Murphy, who is the director of Monsters, which I am yet to see, it's a show based on the story of the Menendez brothers. It's getting really criticized for making it too fake and too dramatic, but that's usually what happens when you try to show a real event as a movie. It is either too underwhelming, too overwhelming, too real, or too fake, and it's very hard to get right. But I wonder if the brothers expected or even wanted to make a huge fuss about their murders. I would assume not, because who would want to get caught for some of the most devastating moments of their lives? And of course, it's difficult to justify two incredibly brutal murders as well. I personally believe that it was unjustified to kill your parents. I mean, of course, that doesn't mean that it wasn't. But unless the self-defense argument stands which didn't during the second trial. The crimes were nowhere near proportional. But then again, they were kids when they were emotionally abused like that, when they were molested. I mean, nowadays, you'd get arrested for that. You'd be sent to jail for that, although the punishments aren't as strong as a lot of people would like it to be. Taking the fact that that your kids are young for granted in your own creation, it's just not an ideal parent's job. And I think that it was too late that they remembered that, or perhaps they didn't remember it at all. I think that another way to describe what the world has been doing since the incident is grossly sugarcoating the homicide, grossly romanticizing it. It is neither beautiful nor fascinating that two brothers decided to murder their quote-unquote cruel parents. It is also the fact that people take an insane amount of disgust in that Jose molested the children. Perhaps some people consider this alleged as well. I'm not exactly sure on what's the facts of this case, but it seems to be a pretty evident fact in this case. I think it's unjustified in both ways. Most people can agree in that. Killing is unjustified. Molesting your kids is unjustified. But the main lesson isn't what is unjustified. It's not to be didactic, but it's just the truth. And I think only in this example do we see the problem of shirt coating. It distorts the truth in very ugly ways, ways that people do not want to see it distorted as. It's crazy to see that it's been decades since the homicide and people still talk about it. They reminisce about it. They make clips about them. I'm sure there was a less dramatic homicide that could teach us the same exact lesson. But as of right now, I think that's enough sugarcoating. It happened in a way that only the family knows, but that secret is buried deep in the ground. Literally. I give the sugar coating of sugar coating of the Menendez brothers two stars. This podcast was written and produced by me, Minnie Kim. If you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. If you'd like to suggest an affliction for me to share a code, please email me via afflictionsharecoded at gmail.com. So I do want to know your thoughts on this case, just because it's a really controversial case and you probably knew it before I even explained it to you. So on the butterfly effect of the whole incident, it's something to think about as you go along your day. And I hope that day is a good one as well.